This module is all about deleting files. It's a reasonably straightforward and simple process to delete a file in Unix. Please note, very, very few versions of Unix have any concept of undeleting a file. This means that if you delete a file, there is almost no way of getting it back. Thus, of course, the programs that we describe in this particular module should be used with caution. Anyway, that said, let's have a look at them. There is a program called RM, which is short for Remove, which is used to remove or delete files. If you attempt to remove a file, and that file happens to be read-only, if you don't know what read-only is, we'll find out about that later, then you will actually be asked to confirm that that is something that you wish to do. Let's have a look at the some examples of removing files. OK, here is uh, my set of files again. I will now remove set.txt. And it's gone. No messages to tell me that it's gone. It's just gone. Hopefully, I know what I'm doing. I will now attempt to remove set2.html. Now, before I started this example, I actually caused set2.html to be read-only or write-protected. So when I press Enter, I get a message saying, do you really wish to remove this file? It is write protected, it is read only. And if I say yes, then it succeeds and the file is gone. Now, this may concern some of you. If a file is read only, surely it should not be able to be deleted. Well, that's not entirely the case. In fact, it's not the case at all. That's not really what read only means, at least not as far as files are concerned. We'll talk more about this in the chapter on security. For the moment, all you need to know is that if the file is write protected, you'll be prompted to see if you can delete it. It is important to note that you cannot delete files that are owned by somebody else unless they give you express permission to do so. And again, we'll be talking about such permissions in our security chapter. Let's look at some more details now on the rm command. Let's see how else it can be used. The rm command has several options. Let's have a look at them. The minus i option. You can use the minus i option with rm to force yourself to type in a yes to confirm every single deletion. This is especially useful if you have, say, 20 different files in your directory and you just want to delete about four of them. Then you can say rm space star, or sorry, rm minus i space star and you'll get 20 different questions about whether you wish to delete 20 individual files and you can say yes or no to each one as you see fit. You've got to be very careful with this if you say rm minus i space star and you forget the minus i you've just deleted 20 files, all of your files. So use that with caution. There is a minus f option which simply means do not ask for any confirmation, not on not only for write-only files, or sorry, for write-protected files, but for anything. Do not ever ask for confirmation. And if the file doesn't exist, then don't display any message to that effect. Let's see the difference between those two versions now. rm minus i star, and you get the choice. And I'll just say no to each one. In fact, if I just press enter, it assumes that I've said no. I have to explicitly start a command uh, sorry, start an answer with the letter Y if I wanted to actually successfully delete the file. So I have not deleted anything there. Now I'll try the rm-f option, rm-f, and I'll specify a file that doesn't exist, and I get no error messages about the fact that the file doesn't exist. You may w wonder why such an option is useful. Well, it's useful in shell scripting, and we're not going to talk any more about shell scripting at the moment. Now, there's another option for RM, which is quite dangerous. It's the recursive option. Use this with extreme caution. Consider yourselves warned. This not just does not just remove files, it also removes directories, entire directory trees, entire directory trees, including all their files and subdirectories, and the files within those subdirectories and so on recursively. It'll recur... It'll 
remove an entire directory tree. We could be talking about thousands of files here. You've got to be very careful. You might think to yourself, well, surely that's very dangerous. Surely any user could go and delete every file on the entire Unix system and cause a lot of havoc for everybody else. Well, if the permissions are set up properly, then that won't be able to happen because you'll simply get permission denied messages. Still, it is dangerous enough. That's the trouble with extremely powerful tools such as RM-R. They can also be used in the wrong way. Anyway, I'm not going to demonstrate RM-R. You can practice it by yourself if you need to.